Um, so, yeah, I, I want to introduce some aspects of the curatorial thinking and questions within Bibliotech, um, and in particular the shared and diverging character of the library and the gallery, and what emerges when they become hybridised or one inhabits the other. Um, the talk is a bit different to the abstract, where I was going to talk about some other projects beyond this, where I'm sort of working on almost like a series of institutions, but um, for length that has been, um, I'm not going to attempt that. Um, so. Let me start by saying that Bibliotech could perhaps also have been titled The New Library, The Artist Run Library, or Another Library, because essentially we see it as a semi functioning library, if only for a moment, an exhibition in the form of a library. We liked this idea of how a group exhibition of works that engage with reading, writing, publishing, collecting would almost by default become library like. We're interested in what an artist-run library might be, or a library composed of artist books and projects that relate to reading, writing, publishing, collecting and distribution. And how each of, um, each of these things, how do they speak to each other and how do they co-constitute the other? So libraries often change slowly over time, weighed down by their architectures and collections. So what happens and is afforded when a library works within the galleries spatial freedoms and the protocols of the white cube, or if the library dresses in the guise of the temporary contemporary exhibition. Might it overcome some of the morbid symptoms of the old holding back the new that Gramsci described, but also what might be lost and render it less library-like? Here at Neem, the materials generally traverse the walls, not shelves, there is more space and there are less books than the typical public libraries. It's more like the reading rooms you find in galleries perhaps, augmenting exhibitions. But here there is no other exhibition that these materials seek to contextualise. Rather it responds to the world as exhibition, the everywhere character of information that digital culture produces. So this space speculates on how we might create reading rooms for a reading world. When the library inhabits the gallery, one institution parasitically in another, we might ask, can or do they hybridise? And do these institutional labels and boundaries persist? And a broader question invoked by this is, can we invent new types of institutions? Or do we just remodel and refunction old ones? Is there something kind of fundamental about the types of institutions we have? And does this include their chameleon-like ability to change with the times? That somehow precludes truly new socio-technical institutions being invented or old ones being dismantled. We might say that the gallery and the library are both examples of what Hegel called objective spirit, a product of mind that we produce in matter the public manifestation of our deepest commitments, a representation of both deep subjective needs and our collected mindedness, where the autonomy of the self emerges from a subjective spirit but is developed through its institutionalized expressions in interaction with other selves. And it's interesting to be talking about this to you all, as many people in the room working within art, arts institutions. To speak more of this morphing relationship between individual and collective, I'd like to say something about how being a publisher is a kind of gateway drug to being a librarian, perhaps. Our edited volumes, um, um, including the, the act of reading, that you see here, which was very much a pre precursor to, to this project. Artists rethinking the blockchain. And then future vol volumes we have on the legacy of, of Frankenstein that we've just spoken about. And a new book on DAOs that we're working on with Ruth Catlow and Penny Rafferty. 
brings together a collection of over 100 artists and writers. So this mode of gathering together continues into the, into the exhibition. Um, so just leave that out. Um, bringing our books into dialogue with other books, archiving and library-based projects. The library is a unique place for interaction with other selves, from the hive mind of its spaces to the modular mobilities of the book. But the library is also undoubtedly under pressure. In the UK, public spending cuts have closed almost 800 libraries in the past decade. Alongside this, we see the growth of online platforms. One peculiar but telling example of this is how the surge in online shopping during the pandemic has led to paper mills switching production from book paper to packaging, in some cases being taken over by Amazon for this purpose and driving up the price of paper and book printing in the process. Here, paper pulp morphs with the times and books become boxes. So I just wanted to share um, this idea of how institutions can function as what um, Mary Douglas calls entropy minimizing devices in relation to both the gallery and, and the library and, and what happens when perhaps things are, are brought together. So she says, past experience is encapsulated in an institution's rules so that it acts as a guide as to what to expect from the future. The more fully the institutions encode expectations, the more they put uncertainty under control with the further effect that behaviours tend to conform to the institutional matrix. If this degree of coordination is achieved, disorder and confusion disappear. And to this sense of the entropic institution, um, I thought we could add this text work by Liam Gillick, if all relations were to reach equilibrium, this building would dissolve that was proposed and rejected for the UK Home Office building, um, but then shown later here at MEMA in Middlesbrough. Now, an alternative to this might be Katie Patterson's somewhat negantropic future library, um, a video of which is included in, in this exhibition, for which a forest has been planted in Norway that will supply paper for a special anthology of books to be printed in 100 years' time. Between now and then, one writer every year will contribute a text with the writings held in trust, unread and unpublished until the year 2114. So more broadly, Bibliotech is an intuitive response to and performance of wider oscillations of equilibrium in institutions and between institutions. And it also attempts to recalibrate and build bonds through its liveness and camaraderie between collaborators and by being open to participation that offers the library and the gallery a conviviality and a different type of legibility. The show could also be said to be a library of libraries. There is Katie's work, but we also are going to hear from Silvio and Rosa about their wonderful archives and collections. And in the show, we also present two other projects Talk has been involved with. Um, this is David Gautier's Lift Server Busy, um, which is in the downstairs gallery, which is a 1,600-page edited volume using um, conversations on some of the different listserv mailing lists like NetTime. And there's an online index that accompanies it you can follow the, uh, the website too that redirects you back to the original material. And a project we've just been involved in, um, Animate Assembly. And this is where Talks work is kind of extending from publishing books to helping publish um, or publishing edited volumes, but also doing artist books. And in this case, um, really designing a, a website which involved, um, I haven't got the website here, but you can look at it, animateassembly.org, uh, a variable typeface, and gifts by Antonio Roberts. And then we have um, this printed work that kind of bookends the project, and we have some of these um, available to take away if anyone wants at the end. That's some work by um, Caroline Sibiu. Um, 
And so, yeah, I just want to finish um, today by saying thank you again to, to Yanis and Helene and also um, to, to all the artists involved in this project and who we kind of see as, you know, co-librarians, um, our co-bookworms. And we're kind of excited to take this project further. We're also showing it in Exhibition Research Lab in Liverpool. And yeah, be interested in the discussion to kind of hear, hear your feedback about it. So I'm now going to hand over to Nathan.